Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, blue liquor shells, desolate service, peasants, vassals, minions, Zionists, people who have balls enough to talk about Zionists. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I want to talk about the Yinon plan. And uh, someone correct me on my pronunciation if I'm not getting that right, and I know you will. So anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about the Yinon plan separately because I, I came across it um, doing other research, and uh, I found it very fascinating and certainly relevant. I know you will see the relevancy as well uh, to our current situation. And this is a lot of reason why uh, people like myself talk about the fact that the United States foreign policy revolves around the strategic and national security needs of Israel. And uh, we see that even now, uh, in spite of the fact that it's cloaked in uh, the uh, regime removal in Syria, and now we have the, uh, the ISIS uh, offensive going on. Uh, a lot of this has to do with some uh, basic ideas that uh, are outlined in the Yinon plan. And, and the Yinon plan has uh, other precedents and other um, uh, other sources uh, that uh, certainly confirm uh, that this plan has uh, existed in a lot of different forms with a lot of different uh, precedences. And it certainly has a precedent in the uh, 1996 a clean break document, a new Israeli strategy towards 2000. And this was uh, generated by Israeli-American Zionists, and it called for pushing the Syrians out of Lebanon and destabilizing Syria in cooperation with Turkey and Jordan. And it also involved uh, removing Saddam Hussein from power and then uh, using a global network uh, to demonize Iraq, Syria, and Iran. And uh, so we certainly saw that unfold. Uh, so it turns out that this paper, which has been cited uh, often by people who, who know about it, um, this is a blueprint for what we see happening. And the Yunnan plan is a lot like that as well. It's an Israeli strategic plan to ensure Israeli Nash regional superiority. And uh, this is a, a interesting in itself because we have the United States uh, uh, basically creating a resolution whereby Israel would never have its uh, military superiority in the region challenged. That's part of U.S. foreign policy now. And, uh, and in the Yinon plan, we have this Israeli strategic plan to ensure Israeli regional superiority. When they say regional superiority, of course they mean regional military superiority. Um, it insists and stipulates that Israel must reconfigure its geopolitical environment through the balkanization of the surrounding Arab states into smaller and weaker states. Uh, boy, does that sound familiar. Um, so Israel actively involved in reconfiguring its geopolitical environment and balkanizing, breaking up all the surrounding Arab states, which is exactly what we see happening. What a coincidence. And uh, interestingly enough, the plan called for Iraq as the number one target to be broken into Kurdish and Shia and Sunni states. And this was previous to the U.S. Uh, invasion of Iraq. And uh, so the fact that it was already in the Yidon plan, the U.S. invaded Iraq, even though it had nothing to do with 9-11. And um, then we end up uh, attacking Iraq, uh, at least partially, to fulfill the strategic needs and national security needs of Israel. It's just that simple. So uh, a lot of uh, people tend to blame Bush for getting us into the war in Iraq, but I'll spread that uh, blame to go around to the fact that the United States um, foreign policy is essentially enslaved uh, by the state of Israel. And, and we see, once again, one has to wonder uh, in this situation we find ourselves in now with ISIS, uh, and, and notably ISIS has not attacked, granted they got their hands full, but they have not attacked Saudi Arabia, they have not attacked Israel, and they have not attacked Turkey. So one has to factor that in when considering this situation. And then one also has to factor in that uh, uh, we now have a, a Iraq in a situation where ISIS may facilitate the breakup of Iraq into a Kurdish and a Shia and a Sunni region, which would fulfill the designs of this Yinan plan. 
in the Unon plan uh, goes on. It, wa it also wants a divided Lebanon. It also wants a divided Egypt. It also wants a divided Syria. So we see the, the breakup of Syria in progress as well. Um, and perhaps uh, we, we will see uh, these same tactics unfold in some of uh, Israel's other targets in the Yunnan plan, which include Iran, Turkey, Somalia, and Pakistan. So it's interesting in itself that this Israeli strategic plan, uh, and, and when they talk about their uh, regional superiority, they talk about a region stretching all the way across the Middle East and uh, over up into Turkey and across into Pakistan. And incidentally, the Yunnan plan also calls for the destabilization and balkanization of Sudan, Libya, and most of the rest of North Africa as well. So interesting that uh, predating 9-11, uh, predating the Iraqi invasion, we have an Israeli plan that calls for the de destabilization of all the North African states, including Libya and Sudan, and uh, they want a, wanted a divided Iraq, they wanted a weakened Iraq, they wanted a divided and weakened Syria, and uh, they also have Lebanon, Egypt, Iran, Turkey, Somalia, and Pakistan on that list. And uh, so that's uh, rather chilling in some respects, but we, we see a lot of this, a lot of this kind of uh, strategic um, planning and this, uh, this idea of fragmentation and balkanization. We also see in the a project for a new American century and no surprise that uh, essentially the Yunnan plan, um, the clean break document, the project for a new American century, all of this stuff that's considered neoconservative is also neoconservative dash Zionist. And almost all of this material is prepared by uh, dual citizens, uh, known Zionists, and um, flat out uh, Israeli uh, citizens and government workers. And uh, like I say, this uh, is Israel wanted the U.S. In fact, when Israel, uh, when the United States first uh, put uh, Afghanistan and Iraq in its targets, uh, Israel also wanted the U.S. to attack Syria, Libya, and Iran. And uh, so, um, once again, we see a clear path uh, of the is Israel uh, dominating U.S. foreign policy because Israel wanted the U.S. to attack. Syria, Libya, Libya, and Iran after Iraq, and we've uh, certainly gone after Syria and Libya, and um, and we also see um, the uh, influence of that same policy in other countries not even brought up here, like Yemen, um, which is collapsing as we speak as well. So anyway, um, I I just wanted to talk about that separately. I'm sure everyone here um, who who knows about it appreciates. Uh, hearing more about it, and those who didn't know about this Yunnan plan, it's uh, something worth looking into, and uh, certainly a fascinating document that has a lot of relevance to what we're seeing right now. I'm a useful idiot, don't you be one too. <laughs>